Okay, so our template is now a bit more functional. Uh, we can specify a couple of parameters, but it does rely on the user specifying storage account name, which turns out to be globally unique, which is probably a bit of a big ask. So we're going to change this a little bit from a parameter uh, to a variable where we're going to take a prefix, which the user can specify, but we'll have a default in there. And then we're going to append some characters to that uh, to give it a good chance of being unique. Now, if you remember, the actual storage account's name needs to be between three and 24 characters, must be lowercase, and can only include alphanumeric. So it's quite specific as to what's allowed. Um, and so let's start making some of these changes. So in the parameter section, I'm going to turn that from storage account to storage account prefix and include that there um, in terms of the description. Prefix for the storage account name. Um, and then we're going to use a few variables here. Okay, so we're going to create um, storage account as a variable, and we could just have that directly mapped into parameters, and then storage account prefix, which is now popping up there. Um, so that'll be a one-to-one -one for that. But what we want to do is we want to actually concatenate a unique string on the back end of this. And then we want to make sure it's also lowercase. And then finally, we're going to make sure it doesn't come in too long. So let's have a quick look at some of the functions you can use. If you go uh, into here and do ak.ms slash arm func, then that'll take you straight through to the arm functions. Let me just make that a bit bigger as well. So that'll take you through into the functions area. We'll be doing a couple of string functions. There's a number of different function areas. So you can do numerics. There's information about the current deployment or existing resources, some comparison ones, which we'll touch on later in the labs around conditional deployments, and also some more complex ones around arrays and objects. But here we're going to use a few um, which are quite commonly used. So concat is one of the ones which is very commonly used. Um, so that enables you to take multiple strings and join them together. Uh, we'll also be using to lower, which lower cases. And finally, we'll be using unique string. So unique string is a little bit badly named in that it doesn't always create a unique string. It will always create a hash variable, as it says, deterministic, based on what you seed it with. So if you give it the same seed, it will give you the same hash results each and every time, which is actually very useful to us. So let's go back and start pulling some of these things together so we can see how the nesting looks. So I'm going to get rid of um, the argument I've got there for the value, just have uh, uh, empty string space, so let's empty that out. So the first one um, I'm going to put together is to have the to lower, okay? So we're going to make sure everything's lowered after it, and I'll put the square bracket afterwards just to finish that off. Now a little hint, if you want to keep having the IntelliSense come up, do a double space and then move the cursor back in between the two like that, and then if you do something like concat, then it'll come up, okay? So then we can... Um, take our first value and our second value. Our first value is going to be our parameter for storage account prefix. And then we're going to put a suffix string onto that. So let me just put suffix in as a string at the moment, just so we can see that. Um, oops. So we can see that um, it's going to be accepted as a function expression. OK, so now we're going to replace suffix Rather than being a string like that, we're going to have the unique string function. Okay, so let me just put that in. Now, if I hover over that, you'll see that it takes at least one argument. So all the functions are very useful in that you can hover over the top of them and it will just give a description as to what it needs and what it's going to do. So for unique string, we're going to provide it with um, something to make it vaguely unique. Now, for us, we just want to make sure that we have a storage account within this specific resource group. Um, so on that basis, what we're going to do is going to use the resource group function. Uh, now, resource group is a function returns an object which has a number of sub properties, ID, location, name, um, and properties. Uh, we just need to use the ID, so we'll take ID and tab that in as well. And now we have a function which is going to seed the unique string uh, with uh, the resource group ID. That'll give us a 13 character code. Um, when it returns it back, and I'm going to prefix that with our storage account prefix and then lowercase everything. So that's all in place. If I remove the spaces we don't need just to shorten the argument a little bit, then I'll tidy that up. 
this is more complex than any other um, expression that you're likely to put in using this many functions, um, unless you're doing some really complicated stuff uh, based on conditionals later on. Um, but it's good practice just so you can see how things are nested and how you can pull those in quickly. The other thing I'm going to add in is a default for our storage account prefix. So I'm going to put in RI Cheney and then STG um, as my default value. There we go. And then make sure it's got a comma on the end. Make sure it's got that red one. Um, and the other thing I'm going to put in is I'm going to put in a max length as well. This will take a integer value. Now, because we know the unique string is going to return 13 characters and the maximum length for a storage account name is 22, then really the max length I want my users to be able to put in if they override this default is 11. So that will make sure we never exceed that 24 characters. Okay, so we're done. As you can see, um, the last thing to do is that storage account is never used. We're using parameters rather than um, the variables, so we need to correct that. So if I just type in variables there, and for our display name, then that will finish that off, and we should no longer have any issues with this workspace. So I'll save that file, and now it's ready to submit.